What's going on, everybody? I'm back with another video for my Omi homies. Now, earlier this week, Reeker dropped their Rugrats NFT project. It's uh, generative art, one of ones. It did quite well for itself. A lot of people were talking about it online. It's really their first successful drop. People were changing their profile pics to their Rugrats NFTs, and it sparked some discussion. People started talking about Vivi's model versus this one of one generative art model and which would be better long term. It, it also sparked a discussion of interoperability, the importance of interoperability for Vivi and its long term success, and whether or not Vivi needs OpenSea to succeed long term. So I'm going to talk about all of that in this video. I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. Is Recur a Vivi killer? I'll tell you the answer right now. The answer is no, I don't think so. Um, I'm going to tell you why in this video. So stick around. There is a lot to talk about. If you like this sort of content, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. We are closing in on 2,500 subs. It's my one year anniversary on YouTube. I started this channel exactly one year ago, almost at 2,500 subs. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you like this sort of content, Vivi and Omi content, hit the like and subscribe button. Now let's get into it. So if you're not familiar with Recur, they're in the licensed NFT game similar to Vivi. However, they're not releasing digital statues like Vivi. Their model is different. Their latest drop was generative one of one, similar to what you see on OpenSea. There's a Recur pass that they sold when they launched. It gives people early access to drops. I bought one of the passes for $300. I have not yet bought any of their NFTs. Right now, I think the portal pass goes for below retail. Gary V does have a stake in the company, but he really hasn't spoken about them. I do see his brother, though, online uh, tweeting about some of their drops. The current floor price for one at the time of this recording is $245, but they do have different characteristics, and some are rarer than others, and I'm not really sure how it works, but I'm sure some are considered more valuable than others. Two days ago, I think the floor price was like $450. So they've come down a little bit. So what this drop really demonstrates to me is how fast this space moves, how much excitement can be built uh, off of a single drop. And it also raises some questions that people have been having about uh, Vivi's long term success, and the importance of interoperability. That's one of the things that people use to, you know, FUD the project. Um, and whether or not Vivi needs OpenSea to succeed. Let's tackle the OpenSea thing first, all right? A lot of people are thinking that Vivi NFTs are going to skyrocket if they hit OpenSea. Uh, I'm not sure that's exactly the case because you've got a different consumer base and different type of product over on OpenSea. If Vivi collectibles migrated there, there, there are so many vv collectibles you've got like literally millions of um editions that have been released already uh that you know kind of be like a little overwhelming i think for uh the marketplace and, and maybe hard to digest and understand for people who are not used to that type of collectible so i don't necessarily think that vv nfts would you know soar because of a quote-unquote open c effect i do think that any exposure for Vivi is good and introduces more potential customers and users to the platform. But I don't necessarily think that OpenSea is something that's going to catapult the value of these collectibles. Vivi is a marketplace in and of itself. All right. And they don't need another marketplace to validate it. All right. The, what's going to drive the price of Vivi collectibles is Vivi collectors and the more people come into the project get exposed to the project as they are now at san diego comic-con and as they will at all of the, as they will at all of the other future con events this year you got the designer con in uk you got designer con in anaheim new york comic-con you're gonna get more and more people introduced to the Vivi marketplace and we saw back in january as Vivi prices were spiking more and more people were coming into the marketplace and it's really quite simple people are going to go 
to the marketplace where the money is at. So Vivi doesn't need OpenSea. And my guess is that OpenSea more than likely will not be here in five years, all right? There's going to be, there are gonna be more and more marketplaces that come out. This is a very nascent space. Coinbase, you know, dropped their marketplace. It didn't do well at all. But there are gonna be more and more NFT marketplaces that emerge and OpenSea is likely to turn into a MySpace, all right? I'm not saying that's gonna happen, but it's more than likely that there's gonna be a new dominant player that enters the game. So, you know, to say that Vivi relies on another marketplace for their success, um, I think is not true at all. Vivi has its own marketplace and as prices go up and as more awareness is created, people are going to gravitate to the VV marketplace. And very important, the VV marketplace is built for mainstream adoption. It's built for everyday people, right? If you're an everyday person and you're trying to get into OpenSea and you need different wallets, you need your crypto wallet, your MetaMask wallet, it's not easy to understand for people who are not crypto natives or crypto literate. Vivi is very simple to understand, all right? My father could download Vivi. He's 83 years old. My father could download Vivi, purchase gems, and purchase a collectible, all right? It's a streamlined system geared towards mainstream adoption. So no, I don't think that Vivi needs OpenSea at all to succeed. And I'm not even convinced that uh, VVNFTs would gain much or benefit much from being listed on OpenSea as they're a totally different type of product than what you're used to seeing out there. All right, um, but, but I think that the exposure, again, would be good. You know, it'd be a net positive, but I don't think we'd get those explosive gains that a lot of people expect. Um, that remains to be seen. More important, I think, is the question of interoperability and its importance in relation to Vivi, right? There are a few things that people point at the naysayers or the, you know, the people who don't like this project. There are a few people that they point at um, to put the project down. The first one was there was no cash out. That's now in the rear view mirror. The next biggest thing you hear is that these are not real NFTs, right? I think that the question of interoperability and its relation to Vivi's long-term success is a complicated one. Now, I do believe that VV NFTs will continue to be successful, even if they don't all end up being interoperable and they're just living in this closed off VV ecosystem. I still think that they'll be successful. However, I think they'll be more successful with interoperability and the ability to move them to different, you know, to your own wallet and to different platforms. All right, whether or not it ends up happening for all the collectibles remains to be determined. I, the artist uh, collectibles will definitely get interoperability. Company like DC, I think, will allow their um, NFTs to be released into the world there. And DC's kind of everywhere already. Uh, the real question is whether or not Disney and uh, Marvel will allow it, but it remains to be seen. Even if they don't, I think that Vivi will continue to have success. However, if they do, they'll have more success. That's my opinion because you've got a certain number of people who subscribe to the belief of, you know, not your keys, not your NFT. And these will never be considered real NFTs to a certain group of people. That being said, that group is going to shrink as years go on. As the years pass and the whole space continues to grow and NFTs inevitably go mainstream, I believe that very few people are going to actually subscribe to, to the ethos of not your keys, not your NFT. And you're seeing that now as the crypto market, you know, the asset class grows, most retail investors are happy to keep their coins on a centralized exchange like Coinbase. They don't want to be bothered with their own private wallet. They'd rather keep it in a centralized location they think is safe. And I think the real beauty of Vivi and the genius of the team was that they built this product, this platform for mainstream adoption 
before anyone knew what an NFT was. And they led off with an app that was easy to use in spite of the fact that they had to pay 30% to Apple and 30% to Google of you know all the per all the gems that are purchased in the marketplace. They're, they took a hit financially in order to onboard people easily. All right? And that's because they sought mainstream adoption from the beginning. And that's evidenced by the fact that they chose to call these digital collectibles and not NFTs. And a lot of people, their competitors, the naysayers criticized them for that. But they had a long-term plan. And if you look at what you know Meta and Facebook Meta is doing now, they're advertising NFTs as digital collectibles because it's easier for everyday people to understand. And inevitably, that's the end game for this whole space. All right, it's the everyday user. It's not the sophisticated crypto literate, you know, person who's you know doing tons of research and knows how to store their collectibles, their NFTs on a MetaMask, it's for everyday people like my 83-year-old father. So while I do think the lack of interoperability narrative will continue to follow Vivi um, and people will continue to criticize them for that, I think that long-term they'll, they'll get there, they'll have full interoperability. I think it's one of their goals. It may take some time. And the upside potential could be capped by a lack of interoperability, but I think that most people will be happy to store their VV collectibles inside of VV. And I think that there is room in this industry for more than one company and more than one type of collectible. So a lot of people are drawn to this type of collectible, the one of one generative art. And obviously based on all of the success that they've already had, a lot of people are drawn to VV collectibles and there's room for both types of collectibles now. The good news is for those who like the one of one generative art pieces, David Yu has stated in past AMAs that this is something that's on the roadmap for Vivi and they will be releasing projects like this. So that's something to look forward to. But the bottom line is this is going to be a big industry with a lot of different players and there's room for more than one successful company. And I hope that Recur does well because the better they do, the more people they attract to the industry, the bigger the pie gets and the bigger the piece of Vivi's pie is. So Recur does have a couple more drops on the way similar to the Rugrats drop. They've got a Care Bears and a Hello Kitty drop on the way. I'll be looking out for those. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Does Vivi need OpenSea? Does Vivi need interoperability to succeed? you like this sort of content make sure you hit the like button subscribe to the channel help me get to 2500 and follow me on twitter my twitter handle is linked down below as always i hope you all have a great weekend stay happy stay healthy and stay safe i will see you in the next video